Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Um, so just a few days ago I showed you the unboxing of um, my Fireside Harp Kit uh, and today I want to talk to you about um, the build process um, and what I did to turn it into this harp because now it is done <laughs> and I'm so excited about it. Um, I'm not going to play it for you today uh, because it's still in the tuning process. Every time I tune it, it immediately falls out of tune. <laughs> and that's totally normal. Um, so if you're building it, know that it's going to take probably a few days of dedicated tuning <laughs> to get it to kind of stabilize and stay in the right spot. But um, I will be doing a review video in a couple days, and then you will definitely get to hear lots and lots and lots of it. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to kind of walk you through my process of building this harp. Um, so if in the future you decide to build your own um, double strung harp kit or even a single strung harp kit, maybe you'll um, gain some insight from my adventures <laughs> and I can help you out um, that way so uh, you won't make the same missteps that I did. <laughs> um, so at the very beginning, the first thing that I did was um, I sanded the body down. Um, the way that the double strung harp kit comes um, these two sections were already attached, the pillar and the neck. Um, so really I just had to sand those bits and um, sand down the sandboard. <laughs> and so then after that initial sanding of those parts, I decided I was going to get started on the cardboard um, because I wanted to have lots of time to paint it and let it dry. Um, and I did discover I didn't use any primer um, because I thought, oh, maybe I won't need primer. Um, it might be better to use primer. <laughs> I ended up using a lot of coats of paint um, and I will show you the paint that I used. Um, I got this at uh, my local Michaels but I'm sure you can pick it up anywhere. Um, and yeah, the, interestingly <laughs> the blue and the green covered like super well. It only needed like two coats and then um, very strangely <laughs> the orange and the yellow were just awful. I think I seriously had to put 10 coats of the orange on uh, but it did get quite bright <laughs> after a little while. Um, so after I painted the sound box, um, then I went and I put together the frame. Um, and that was super easy. All you needed was a little bit of glue right here um, and a little bit of glue at the bottom. And then you just kind of notch it in there. It fits together pretty well even without the glue. Um, so it's pretty clear where it should go. So that was easy. Um, and then there's like one screw here and one screw here that you screw in and that's that was the frame. <laughs> um, and then while I let that dry, um, I did a varnish on the sound box. Um, and they say to use polyurethane. What I ended up using was this really cool varnish that has glitter in it. <laughs> um, and I'll throw a link to that down in the description so you can find it if you want because it's just the funnest thing. I made everything so sparkly and glittery and <laughs> I was just totally in love with it. <laughs> um, and it dried very, like it's nice, it's not sticky or anything, so it was a good varnish. <laughs> and then um, since I liked it so much, I did end up using that um, same varnish on the frame instead of using the tongue oil like they recommend. Um, I have used tongue oil before, and it's a, it's a good product. It covers wood nicely. Um, I do feel like a more formal finish like a polyurethane or a varnish does provide more protection um, just from my experience with the different kinds of finishes but tongue oil totally works too <laughs> it's all up to you um, something I did find though that I would have done differently um, had I thought about it <laughs> I would have put my little decorations on I like um, put little gems on here they're just sticky on the back and this is actually tape um, I'll put a link to that down in the description too. You can grab it on Amazon. It's just rainbow tape. <laughs> um, and I put it in strips to make the rainbow. Um, but I would have done that before I put the varnish on <laughs> because doing it after means that it does not stick very well. So then I ended up having to put a whole bunch of coats of varnish on top just to get them to stick on there. <laughs> um, and they seem pretty stuck now, so hopefully they don't come off. But just something to keep in mind if you are doing that. <laughs> okay, so my next step was um, I wanted to glue the sound box um, to itself so that it was in a box shape. <laughs> and that was really easy. Um, you just put the glue on a couple specific flaps um, and then you fold it up and uh, you put something heavy on top and then it 
it dries overnight and that was really easy. Um, so while that was drying, I um, did some more varnish coats on here and I did the gems and stuff like I talked about. Um, and then before attaching the sound box to the frame, this was quite key because <laughs> I did that with my wearing. I think I attached the sound box first and it was a terrible idea. So before you attach the sound box, <laughs> <laughs> um, you got to put the bridge pins and the tuning pins in. Um, and the first side is really simple. You just lay it on its side and you can kind of hammer these in. Um, and they do screw also, so you can get like a socket screwdriver, I guess. I'm not sure what they're called even. <laughs> um, and screw these in exactly where you want them. And uh, interestingly, um, if you want levers later, um, you don't put the bridge pins quite as low. You let them sit a little bit higher. So mine are a little bit higher. Um, but yeah, so I hammered those in and those were all ready. But then to do the second side, that was a little um, confusing because um, you don't want to lay it on these that you just put in there. <laughs> um, so what I did was I got a really thick blanket to kind of um, rest these on so that they weren't being pushed too hard. And then I sort of supported the sides with a couple with a couple books so that they um, were a little more sturdy. And then I was able to hammer in the ones on this side. <laughs> um, so that was that was pretty easy, but it required some forethought <laughs> on my part. Uh, and that's one of the other tricks that I wanted to share with you. Um, when you are putting the tuning pins in, um, you're only supposed to put them in so far. Um, and the best way that I found to like kind of gauge what I was doing with that <laughs> was I took the tuning pin and I used a Sharpie to mark um, the halfway through the threaded point. Um, that way, as I was hammering them in or um, screwing them in later, then I could tell <laughs> exactly how far in it had gone because otherwise it was kind of tricky to kind of see that for me. <laughs> Okay, and then once I had all those in, um, it was time to glue the frame to the sound box, which, again, was not difficult. However, there was another thing to think about, and this took a while to occur to me. The way the sound box is made, um, of course, it's optimized for a single-strung fireside harp. So there's a gap um, going down the middle where you would put the single strings. Uh, there is no such gap for the double strings. <laughs> so I realized this and I was thinking like, oh, what am I going to have to do? Am I going to have to carve out some of the cardboard? So I emailed um, the owner of Backyard Music and uh, he got back to me with a super clever solution. <laughs> All you have to do is, and you can do it with a drill, or I actually use like little tiny nails because I didn't trust myself with the drill next to this beautiful harp. <laughs> what I did was, um, you just put the nail in the little hole for the string that's there already. Um, and then you just kind of tap it with the hammer until it breaks through the cardboard. And then you can uh, stick the string right through the hole in the cardboard. And that way um, you don't have more gaps in your cardboard. You get more glue contact between the soundboard and the sound box. So I thought that was a clever idea. <laughs> Definitely. Another thing to keep in mind is you want to do that before you put the eyelets in and you definitely <laughs> want to remember to put eyelets in before you start stringing and tuning your harp. <laughs> um, one thing that I did notice was um, they are a little tricky to put in. Um, so it helps if you have like a flat screwdriver, this is in the directions to kind of push them down. Um, and I found even a couple, I had to kind of hammer them in a little bit cause they just did not want to go in, um, but they all eventually fit. <laughs> um, one thing to keep in mind that made it a little easier on, um, on some of the higher strings. Um, so what I did was for the lower strings, I accidentally strung it without the eyelets cause I wasn't even thinking about it. So then I had to go back and unstring it. And <laughs> I just um, slid the eyelets kind of down the string. Like I put them on the top and slid them down and hunkered them in there and then strung it back up. Um, and that worked well. And then I thought, oh, well, I'll just put all the rest of the eyelets in before I put the strings on, um, which works. However, <laughs> once you get to the upper strings, um, you're already pushing these little tiny strings through a cardboard hole and through the hole in the wood. Um, so it's easy for them to get a little lost in there. 
And um, if you also have to get them through that little um, lip of the eyelid, <laughs> that's a whole other thing that you have to deal with with those tiny strings and it's kind of a pain. So if I had to do it over again, <laughs> what I would do is um, I would put the string through, thread the eyelet through the string so you can just kind of womp it in there and then tune it up. I think that's the ideal order <laughs> to do that in. And then after that, all you have to do is string it up. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, I got really, really good at tying the Harper's knot <laughs> over the course of these 44 strings. Um, yeah, the Harper's knot is tricky. Uh, if you haven't seen yet, Dusty Strings just came out with a new little gadget called the String Button. And they're actually pretty cheap. It's a 12 for like $12. Um, and it makes it really easy. You just loop it through a couple times and then merp, so you don't have to mess with the like little threads of string to keep them anchored. Um, and had I thought about it, or had they come out sooner, I would have bought some for this project, but I didn't. So I fiddled with the Harper's Knot and got annoyed and <laughs> it was the whole thing. But I did eventually get it done. Um, and yeah, that's it. Like I said, um, I <laughs> wouldn't even play it for you because it's so badly out of tune by now, I'm sure. I tune it and then two seconds later. Um, but I'm really looking forward to playing it for you, hopefully in a video on Friday. <laughs> Um, I am going to put in the description links to all of the products that I used, um, and I will be putting some pictures in the video as well so you can see them. Um, and if you have any questions about building this heart, please do comment and ask me. Um, I said in my unboxing video that I was a little bit intimidated by it, and honestly I was, like it seems intimidating. Um, but just like with my wearing heart, once you get going on it, it's it's really a breeze. It's time consuming um, and it takes some concentration, but it's not hard. <laughs> if I can do it, you can also do it. <laughs> it's really just a very simple matter of following directions um, and you can do whatever you want with it. That's to me the fun part about harp kits is you can just make them um, as unique as you want to. Uh, this one um, for June, it's my pride harp. <laughs> And I just, I absolutely adore the rainbows and the gems, and I'm a, a flashy kind of person sometimes, so it's fun to have a, a flashy heart glitter and <laughs> all kinds of fun stuff. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. Thank you all so much for watching. If you would like to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and click on that subscription button right up there. Otherwise, if you would like to join my Patreon or buy me a coffee, the links to those are down in the description. <laughs> I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day.